Good to go? Can everybody hear me? Yeah? OK, good. So hello and welcome to this session where we'll discuss the next generation tooling for doing business process management of Fresco and Activity. My name is Joran Barre. Um, I'm one of the two guys who founded Activity almost four years ago now, so that makes me an Alfresco old timer. Um, my Twitter handle is Jay Barras. Please feel free to tweet during, after uh, the session. I really love to see your feedback, good or bad. Um, one tweet could be to laugh at my funny accent. I'm not native to the UK nor the US. I'm actually from this little awesome country called Belgium. Uh, but anyway, enough about that. Let's get to business. So. Activity. Uh, just a quick raise of hands. Who of you know what activity is, what it does in Alfresco? I'm hoping everybody. Can you do it again? I, did, I just only seen that, that part. I think most of everybody. That's, that's fantastic. So I can skip the next 10 slides. <laughs> uh, anyway, to establish a common baseline, I've come quickly have some slides uh, just to, to get on the same page. So the tagline is activity is a lightweight, open source business process management platform for executing and creating BP Mentor process. Now that's a lot of, of buzzwords, so let's go over them real quickly. So lightweight. Lightweight basically means that activity on itself is just a jar, just a Java library. You could take it, take it in your own project, and just use it. It's very lightweight in the sense of, of um, usage of memory, usage of CPU, uh, and it's also the way it's used in Alfresco, so activity is just imported as a jar. We're also open source. We're on GitHub since about a year now, previous year, September. Uh, we've got about currently 38 pretty active contributors. We've got about 165 at the moment uh, pull requests. So pull requests are the patch, patching system from, from GitHub. That means that every two days in the past year, we, we've had a patch coming from somebody external from Alfresco. Uh, and it's not just simple, you know, simple fixes in the user guide, like a typo we made or something. It's really, some of them are really core changes. Some of them are really new features, which are pretty cool. Uh, from the website only, so activity.org, we have on average 7,000 downloads a month. Um, but that's, that's only from the website. So we assume that, or we hope, I think, that by using Maven, it's many, 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 many more. Uh, but there's no way of tracking Maven usage by all the yeah, local Nexus installations every company has. So we can only hope it's way more than 7,000 a month. We're also being used all across the globe. So this is from the website analytics from the uh, website. You can see that everything is pretty much blue. There are three big, you know, three big, big things is the uh, USA. So thank you for, for that. Uh, China on the right hand side and Germany in the middle. There are two white dots here on the map. I don't know the actual country. If somebody knows can tell me it's some Central African country. I don't know why it's, it doesn't have any visits yet to activity website. Maybe they don't have internet yet. I don't know. And here's a little, well, it's a pretty big island here on top of Norway. I looked it up on the internet. It's, um, it's, I don't know the name anymore. It's too hard to pronounce. But they only have 2,000 inhabitants. So probably none of them are Java developers. And they're, I don't know what they do. <laughs> Try not to freeze, probably. Um, what is the business process? Well, very simply put, there are books being written on that. Um, you can read all that if you want to. But basically, it's a combination of stuff, a sequence of steps you're executing to produce value, right? It's not only about monetary value. Some of them are producing a service, a uh, solution to something. Basically, every time you're doing something, like a combination of steps, and you're executing that, that's a business process. And technically, the way to express those is, is using BPMN 2.0. BPMN is an acronym, an acronym, and it stands for Business Process Model and Notation, now version 2. Now, basically, it's an XML language, which allows you to find things like this, right? This, and this also has a visual representation. So it's not only XML only. It also says how it is actually visualized. Um, being an industry standard, it means you can take this uh, XML file, this process definition, and you can just go to any of our competitors, if you really want to do that, and go and execute it there in a less performant way, probably. The way activity is used in Alfresco, I told you, is just a jar in the Alfresco product as a whole. So, but everything which, which smells like workflow or process is being done by activity. Um, activity is a standalone project, so uh, it has a separate uh, GitHub uh, page. It's not, it's not living in the same Alfresco code base. So it is a separate project, and Alfresco uses it as a library. Right, so for the people who know activity, and that's probably all of you, as the, as the hand showed, there is quite some new stuff regarding the previous release uh, of Alfresco. So one of them is a hybrid workflow. You probably heard this this morning. So the idea is pretty simple, but also very, very powerful. So the idea basically is that 
you start doing workflow on-premise, right? You have some human steps, people filling in forms, uploading documents and whatnot, automatic steps, you know, whatever. Um, at some point in the process, it kicks off to the cloud. Some external person fills in those forms, does some work, I don't know. And, um, and at some point in the process, it comes back to the on-premise and you just continue as, as one process. Now, the, the good thing is there, the powerful thing is there that you don't need to give your external people access to your on-premise system. So they only need to see what you want them to see and nothing more. And they don't need to install special stuff. They can just go to the cloud. Um, technically, for the people interested in that, we're just actually piggybacking on the hybrid sync mechanism, uh, which is pretty cool because we don't have to invent our own stuff. If they make improvements, we get improvements too for the hybrid workflow stuff. Um, one big thing about the Alfresco 4.2 release is the, the public API, as we call it, the overhaul of a lot of the APIs. And one of them is the workflow API. People that have used the workflow API before, they will probably know it is being made I don't know, five, six years ago. And it was made for JUPM back in the day. So it was, you know, the API was a common denominator between JUPM and activity. Now, that's all being upgraded in the last release. So everything we didn't have, like, you know, it didn't even have pagination. I can say that because I wasn't there when I, the first API was written. Uh, it does now have pagination, all the stuff you would expect from a modern API or a modern REST API. If you want to read more about it, uh, because this is not a session on this API, there is a whole documentation online if you go to the Summit website and just go to my presentation for follow that link. Um, of course, uh, we're releasing every three months, about three months, we do uh, an activity release. So it means that since the last version of Alfresco, we've been able to upgrade from Activity 5.7 to Activity 5.13, plus some additional you know, patches we, we gathered from Activity 5.14 already. Um, there's a, a, a uh, I wanted to say shitload, that's not a nice word. Uh, so think of, there's a bunch, a bunch of stuff in those six releases, and it would take me a whole afternoon to tell you all about it, right? Um, I mean, we've, we've, we found some really good performance things we could fix. Uh, we've gotten a rich query API. We've got really good support for Apache. We did, ha we did have that already, but now it's really cool. Uh, we have uh, async continuation, so you can, add, you can give your um, hard work, your processing to a, a thread pool in a cluster. What not? I mean, this is a lot of cool stuff. If you want more, well, if you want to know more about that, just go to our blogs or, go, or talk with me afterwards, and I will gladly uh, go into it. Right, but back to our original problem. So, the stuff this new tooling wants to solve is is the following. So, of course, I'm biased, but you can trust me. Activity is a great solution for creating and executing processes. Um, the problem is it was introduced like when uh, Alfresco was already five years old, and one of the the key things we had to do is backwards compatibility because we've got all these customers having written stuff on GBPM. So we didn't want them to you know, uh, have to revise all that or redo all that. So it, it was a must back then that it was backwards compatible. Now, the way you define forms uh, and, and do it, it wasn't or isn't the prettiest of ways. You know, it's very flexible, it's very powerful, true, but it's just you know, plain boring. It's time consuming, error prone, it's not. Uh, how many people actually did workflows in Alfresco before? Oh, wow, impressive. Yeah. Well, I wasn't there when that version was implemented. <laughs> but so we're going to fix that with the new tooling. You're going to be very, very happy then. That's, that's quite a crowd here. That's amazing. So I don't need to explain to these guys, but I need to explain to the other guys. What do you have to do if you have a process, for example, with a human step? A human step meaning you have some people who have to fill in forms, right? Um, for each of such a step, we need to have, of course, we need to have the process, but the process is shared for all the steps. So that's, that's a given always. But for each of the tasks where a human is involved, you need to have a content model on the Alfresco side. That's an XML file. And you need to have a form configuration for share, which is, again, an XML file. Oh, yeah. That's just to illustrate it's an XML file. That was pretty smart of me. Anyway, these aren't hard. You know, this is pretty simple. XML, but it's just time consuming and boring if you need to write these all by hand. You've got some tooling to help you there, but it's not you know, just a standard XML tooling. It's not very fun. Um, it's not very pretty to look at. And when you have real process, and this is not a real process, by the way, so suppose you have this simple process with only three steps, it means that you have, for each of them, three content models and three share form configurations, right? That means you've got seven XML entities, seven XML files you need to do to create this very simple, stupid process. And the funny thing is they all cross-reference each other. So this one references the other one. The IDs need to match. And they need to go into different locations. Some of them need to go into share. Some of them need to go into the repository in the Spring Surf config. You know, it, it's, you, know you need to be a very Alfresco wizard 
to know where it all needs to go. Um, and of course, consultants love that because they can ask a lot of money to do that. So sorry for the consultants. It's just spaghetti code, right? And that's the problem we want to fix. We don't like spaghetti code. So the solution is something which we call, under the umbrella term, Project Kickstart. And it's actually, you know, the tagline of Simple and Smart is making this creation of processes easy, simple, and smart. You don't need to know XML. You don't need to know Java. You don't need to put up your uh, Alfresco wizard hat and ropes. And all, but very important is that, definitely for developers, that everything that's being generated by this tool is usable as it was before. So you don't need to learn anything new. If you still want to take XML and, and twiddle it yourself, you can still do that. You don't need, I mean, your skills you acquired are not lost with this tooling, which is, I think, very important in everything we do. The demo use case, so I'm going to go into uh, stop blabbering and start showing. The demo use case is a very simple one. The point is not the process. The point is, you know, the tooling is I'm going to do a very simple recruitment process. I'm going to do a few iterations of it. So the first iteration, I'm going to do very simple. We've got a resume coming in. I want some people to screen those resumes. And if we say it's a good fit for the, for the, the candidate, candidature or whatever, we handle some paperwork. So let's go to their live coding. It's almost fun, always fun. So currently, the uh, uh, Project Kickstarter is shipped as an Eclipse plugin. But we are working on a web UI. And the, the idea of this Eclipse plugin is also that this is an exercise already for the back end. Right? So I will give you pointers to where you can find the source code and the, this Eclipse plugin later on in the presentation. So let's create a new. And this is really a small resolution. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to cre create a new Kickstart process diagram. I'm going to call it hiring. Here we go. So what we have here in the middle, that's a dra drawing canvas. On the right-hand side, we've got some of the constructs we currently support. Um, so we're going to add many more of them in the near future. But these are the constructs I'm going to use in my demo. So uh, that's a bit egoistic of me. Um, anyway, in Alfresco, as you probably know, is, is when you start a process, you always have a start form where you gather the data, right? Where you're allowed to upload some stuff before you actually start the process. So you always need to define a start form in Alfresco. So let's do that, make it a bit bigger. Also going to give it a name, because if I, I did forget that when I was practicing it and then just crash horribly. I didn't write that part, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so let's create a new start form. Here you go. This is the the um, form editor, basically. So uh, I can't, you see. Normally, you can see all these stuff in, in one page, but even if I make it the smallest. But anyway, the idea is the same. You've got your canvas on the middle. On the right-hand side, you've got your controls. And you've got your simple form controls, text uh, input, number input, date pickers, drop downs, etc. You've got some people pickers, group pickers, document pickers. And you've got some Alfresco-specific stuff, like the priority. The workflow description is something uh, only specific to Alfresco. Comments, packages, etc. And a way of grouping your forms. So in Alfresco, you can sectionize. You can make different sections in your, um, in your form. And this is the, the group construct. Anyway, let's get coding, or modeling, rather. So I'm just going to add here the workflow description, because that's just you know how everything typically in Alfresco is. Also, I don't like these being stacked. So you can hear in the group, you can say, OK, I don't want a single layout. I want a two-column layout. I want a three-column layout. Two-column layout will suffice for now. Um, I'm going to add a drop down to this section. I'm going to make this the position. Uh, I'm going to make that mandatory so that people have to fill in that specific form property before actually being able to complete the form. Going to add some demonstration values, like we're going to go for sales position or an, an engineering position or a marketing, whatever. This is just demo, of course. Um, second section is we want to, of course, get some information about the candidate. So obviously, that's candidate information. We want to have his or her name. Also, that's in a mandatory property. It's pretty important in the hiring process. And we also want the email address, because I'm going to use the email address further on. I'm going to create a second group to upload, to allow to upload the resume, so that the Word document, PDF, whatever, some pictures. For this, I'm going to use a package item. So um, people that are, know uh, Alfresco a bit, package, uh, package items are basically documents that are shared across the whole process. So you've got two, two types of you know, these containers. This is basically the container you share across the whole process. I will show you later on how you can make a you know, task-specific container for documents. Uh, and then I just need to add a, here a new group. 
for the persons that actually need to say who actually is going to handle this resume, right? So uh, in my slides, I call this the screening, so I'm going to call this screening too. And I'm going to select some people. Uh, that's pretty mandatory. And also, I'm going to select, allow to select more than one person in a two-column layout. And um, I'm also going to add a number field, which uh, states required number of approvals. So suppose that I select three people, but two of them are OK. If, they, if two of them say OK, go ahead with this. We don't wait for the third one to continue our process. And we're going to make that also mandatory. Save it. You can see it's now linked to my, um, to my uh, process. Anyway, this was a start from, so now we need to create the steps. So one of them is the review step. That's our screening step. Now, the review step actually is already a good example of what Kickstart does. The review step is, in the back end, is more than one step. So this is actually when you drag it to the screen, it will, in the back end, create more than one step for you. So you but this is just to give you an idea of what we're doing at Kickstart. So screening, uh, what are we going to do here? I'm going to assign this, right? I'm going to assign this to multiple users. I can assign this to, and now I can do uh, a reference. So this is a pretty smart uh, wizard because it, it knows the previous forms. It also knows the type of those properties. So I can say, OK, this is a people type. So here, reference it. If you're really hardcore, you can still do it yourself and type it yourself. Um, start from then the required. So I did requires. Anyway, I'm sure you can fill that in. Um, what else do we need? Well, we need to present those people who are reviewing the resumes with a form, right? We need to give them access to the resumes, and we need to say, OK, do you agree with this or not? So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new form. Oh, people on the first row. I like it. And I'm going to call this screening. Here you go. Um, I'm not going to allow to edit names now. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create read-only references to the name to the email, I'm going to put the email below the name, and to the position type. Position, here we go. And I sh see I don't make any, um, no, that's good. Here we go, make it a three, so very small screen, so let's pick the three column layout. And also just give them access to this, you know, this package item, so resumes and pictures, and drag and drop the package items on top of that. Here we go. Uh, that's it. So I just, uh, that's it for this. That's all good. Uh, what I'd still need to do now is you can see here there's a rejected area. So I can now drag stuff on top of them. So whenever a review goes wrong, you can drag and drop stuff on that. That also stacks. I'm also going, now going to add one step only, but it stacks so you can have multiple steps. So what I'm going to do is going to send a rejection email at that point. So just saying to this, to this guy, sorry, we're not, um, we're not hiring you. Fresco.com. Again, here all the property injection work. You can reference whatever you filled in in the start form. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's boring for you guys. So sorry, sorry. That's it. Um, and the way Kickstart Editor works is it goes top to bottom in the happy part. So we define the bad part now. So we're now going to define the happy part. We're going to do something similar. We're going to create an email step with an approval email. Here we go. Going to from oops, HR at Alfresco. Com. To again the same thing. Sorry for repeating that. Subject, and I'm not spending too much. Congrats. And here again in this email, you can reference the properties you filled in before. Here you go. Um, congrats. No, it's not very professional, but anyway, it'll do. Last step before I deploy, I'm going to do paperwork. Um, general assignment things you can do is you can, you can assign it to the workflow person who started the workflow. You can assign it to a single user, hard-coded. You can assign it to a candidate user. That means he, he or she will see it in uh, the queue, can pick the tasks and put it in the personal inbox. Or candidate groups, uh, which uh, most likely will be used, you know, uh, linked to LDAP or something. Anyway, I've got one group in my system called group HR. It means that people in the HR group can see it in the queue, pick it up, and put it on their personal list. Anyway, that was it. So let me just show you now what all you can exp ex well you can do with it. So export it as a Kickstart process. So there are a few options here. So the first option is export it to the target folder. It does what it says it does. You know, it exports it to a target folder here on your local uh, project. You can also export it to a custom location, uh, which is just you know could be something on your hard disk. If you've got an Alfresco running there and you want to just put it already in the right place, you can do that. Or you can hot deploy it using CMS. And I will go into details what it actually does later on in the presentation. 
Um, all of this is configured through a preferences screen, by the way, here. So all the you know, dirty URLs you have to fill in. This is all filled in for you with defaults, by the way, but you have to fill in this stuff if you want to change it. Um, for example, I know from my German friends that it isn't called data dictionary, but something else. Uh, and it doesn't work if you do it on a German installation. That's what I found out yesterday. <laughs> anyway, let's export it. Oh, why did I close this wizard? Uh, project target folder, finish. You can see it generated two folders for me. And it generates, uh, come on, yeah. So it generated for me, first of all, the BPMN2.0 process. So I can open it up. You know, this is all stuff that's pretty straightforward if you know activity. But just to prove to you that actually this is a real process you know, for activity, I can open up with the activity designer. I can see this is actually, uh, it also shows one other thing is one feature we added recently is the auto layouting. So it's not a perfect layout, but at least it tries to do some auto layouting of the box. Uh, so it generates a BPM to O process for you, right? And this is exactly what we define as screening, rejection email, et cetera, et cetera. What it also generates for you is the content model. So you can see here, the, for example, the lists of positions is defined, all the tasks are defined. You see, this, this is not hard XML, but this is all stuff you had to write before by hand. The share form config is being generated for you. you see, this is all the stuff that people normally copy paste all around. Uh, it's not hard XML, as I said, but it's, you know, it's not very nice to do. And uh, let's deploy it now. So good. Expo got a, a local Alfresco installation, a community 4.2 running here. So again, just as a technical reason. OK. So it's now uploading the model through CMS to share, forcing the reload. Here we go. So if you now log into the system, so I've got it appropriately here, going to log in as Brian with an N. He's the VP of engineering, so he, he goes if over every uh, hire of engineers. So if I now go to the workflow page, start the workflow, I see there's now this hiring workflow. Suddenly, I didn't have to reboot anything. Here we go. And this might look familiar, right? This is exactly what we defined here. So you see info, kind of information, resumes, and pictures is exactly what is now at runtime being rendered for you. Remember how, I mean, the people that put up their hand at the beginning of, of having to do this manually, how long this would have taken you to do this by hand. I mean, I don't, I wasn't timing, but probably 10 minutes or something. Yeah, like this, this would take you maybe a half a day if you're really good, maybe longer. Uh, so this really saves, I think, in my opinion, saves your time. So let's go through it and see if it actually works. So hiring of Mark, engineering position. That's funny for my small resolution, it does something. Anyway, his name is Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, you know him. Going to add his resume, so I uploaded already to a um, to a site. Just so it's easy for me for demo purposes. Upload his resume, upload his picture. Going to select some people. Uh, going to add myself. Going to add John Newton. He just arrived, so he John Newton wants to be involved with everything. So let's involve him. Here he is, and Frederick, the other colleague who worked on, with me on this tool. And let's say if two of them say, "Okay, let's go for it," we continue the process. Start the workflow. Uh, since I'm Brian, whoops, since I'm Brian, I can now, uh, I can actually see this, this uh, process. So I can see all the details. I can also see it's currently now in the screening part. And if I go down, I can see we've got three tasks going on, you see, for the three reviewers, for the three screening people. Um, and uh, I mean, normally, but I think my time is a bit limited. Normally, I would log out the system, log in again as, you know, as, as John, as, as myself, as Frederick. And, but I just, if you're an initiator in Alfresco workflow, you will always be able to do everything yourself. Uh, so I'm going to do that, so spare you all the login and logouts. So uh, as Frederick, let's look at the picture, look at the resume. Uh, looks like a you know, quite young guy, inexperienced. Uh, <laughs> also, the resume isn't much, you know, just one gig. Anyway, we need, definitely need developers. doesn't matter what, how much experience they are. Let's, let's just approve it, right? Same for a uh, second one. Let's just approve it. Continue the process. Remember, we only had to have two approvals before we continued. So we're now, the approval mail was sent. We're going to prove paperwork. To prove to you that the approval mail works, I've got this little thing, don't look at the stack trace. I've got this little thing called dev null SMTP running on my system, which actually just has a fake SMTP server, and it just puts emails on my uh, system, which it didn't do for some reason. That would be explaining the stack trace. <laughs> anyway, no, it doesn't matter. It does send emails. It did for the last 10 times I practiced today and yesterday. Anyway, 
do the paperwork, and I didn't. Ah, that's probably it. Yeah, I see what it is. I didn't define as, as uh, a paperwork uh, form, so I can do that now. Anyway, that was the first iteration. I think I already showed you that it saved you a lot of time. But suppose now you know how business is. They always come with new requirements. So suppose that they found, no, looking at the resumes alone, looking at the pictures is not going to be enough to hire a person. So let's schedule a face-to-face -face, uh, interview with this person. So let's, let's do that quickly. So let's open it again, the process. And indeed, I didn't select a form, so I'm going to do that for the paperwork. So I'm going to be lazy. That's also one of the things you can just copy paste stuff around. I call this one paperwork because we didn't have one. Uh, so I'm going to be lazy, copy paste it, remove this part. Working on a small resolution is really hurtful. Uh, yep, here we go. That's enough for paperwork. And now link it to paperwork. Here we go. So it's my previous bug was fixed. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, after the screening, I'm going to add a second step, which is the schedule review step. And I'm going to do that by um, just the, pre the person who started the workflow, so Brian in this case. Going to be lazy again, copy paste this uh, form. I'm going to call it schedule, here we go. Add a new section to that for the interview. Add a date picker here, which is the interview date. Oops, sorry, interview date. Going to make that mandatory. Also, this is important. I need to output it to the, to the, to the workflow as a whole. Now, I didn't do that for the start form because every property on the start form of Alfresco is by default put into the process instance contact. Now, this is not a start form, so I deliberately have to say I need to use it across the whole process. Uh, because by default in Alfresco, it will uh, commit it to the local task and local task only. So that's what it does. But it does actually, behind the scenes, it will generate a script listener with uh, JavaScript that will uh, put it into the workflow instance. So that's that. Let's link it up to our process. Schedule. Here we go. Then, um, because suppose that you scheduled the interview in two weeks from now, it's not very interesting to have a task in your inbox for two weeks, right? So we're going to add a delay step which does exactly what it says. It's delayed, it waits until interview date. Uh, you can configure it with a fixed duration if you want to do that. Uh, or you can just reference a, a date, which I, uh, oh, schedule review. Oh, I didn't link it yet. Schedule, here we go. Wait and use property, here we go. Schedule in review, interview date. It's now linked, it will now wait until this date is reached and then continue the process. Add a second step here for uh, the actual interview. Again, the same initiator of the workflow will do this job. And I'm going to be lazy again, copy paste. Good programmers copy paste, right? Right? <laughs> uh, interview, here we go. And add just a section at the bottom here, which uh, allows me to define stuff like, uh, where is it, general impression. Uh, values like poor, average, good, and good enough for engineering. And then at a second drop down, this is the more important one, where we actually put our decision in. So we're going to make that mandatory also, and we're going to use it later on. So we need to output it to the process. We're going to add two values, higher or reject. So we can now use this value we have in the decision, and we can make a choice step. So we can add a choice step afterwards. I can drag and drop stuff now in this choice step. So I can make this, let's say, the happy part. I can now reference my properties. And again, I forget to, uh, to link my interview. Oops, sorry. There were my kids. I didn't do that to win, you know, have a cute picture to win your, uh, your trust or something. Uh, interview decision is equals to, and all the other stuff you can select is equals to, since this is, you can use expressions here, so you, if you want to have a string literal, you need to add co um, quotes, well, you know, single quotes. So if it's higher, you, uh, you go into that part. If not, let's just send an email for the, how do you call it, the non-happy part. And we go in there if the property for the interview, the decision was equals to reject. By default, you don't have to fill something in because in activity, it will default then to this one if you don't fill anything in, but just to make it pretty. From, again, hr at alfresco.com to, again, start forum, 
email subject. Sorry, sorry, you all did that before. Anyway, let's uh, deploy it to our system. Export it. I'll explain this technical stuff to you. It's all explained in this long text why you have to do this, but it's, yeah. Upload it. It's uploading the model again. Uh, maybe I need to do it this way. Yes, perfect. You didn't see that happening. Uh, start the workflow. Hiring. Still the same start from as before. We didn't do anything about it. So let's go call this the hiring of Hannibal. Engineering. His name is Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> you also know him. Well, you, you guys know a lot of people. Gmail.com. <clears throat> uh, again, resumes, document library, candidate two, plus, plus. Here you go. Select some people. This is the same as before, so I'm going real quickly here. There's two people. Only one of them, just for demo purposes, needs to approve. Start the workflow. Again, uh, we now have the screening tasks. Uh, you can see, <clears throat> again, look at the picture, look at the resume. Look, looks like an experienced guy to me. This resume. I don't know if you can read it, but it says something like, after some unfortunate life events, trying to start a new life as a PHP developer. It does have that against him, of course, but yeah, anyway. We need developers anyway, even if they're PHP developers. Let's continue. Remember, we're now in the um, schedule review, so that's new for this step. So let's go into schedule review. To make it myself easy, I'm going to uh, here we go. put it on, what time is it now, 15.11? 15. 11. 15 um, 11. I'm not going to say 15, 12. I did this just when I, when I was rehearsing. And if you have to wait for a whole minute, if you just pick it on 15, 0, 1, you have to fill a whole minute with blabbering. So anyway, it's being done, but officially, and I can, can trust me on this, it will wait for the time you define it to wait. But now it's done because I took the time already. We're now in the interview step. Here you go. General impression, poor, higher. That's all good. Or just make it uh, good. Task done. Oh, this is not very nice. Uh, we now have sent the approval email. I'm going to check if the email wasn't sent. It is not sent for some reason. Um, anyway, do the paperwork. I, I deliberately, because I'm only using Gmail online version, I deliberately install Outlook on this machine, of all things, to show you that email. So it's yeah, really a pity. Do the paperwork. We do the paperwork uh, and done. Here we go. Uh, process done. And uh, I can now go into it third one, but I first need to show you some slides. So I explained to you that we have hot deployment. The hot deployment is a hack. David Draper is not going to like it. <laughs> it is really a hack in the sense that we're using reflection to go five levels deep nested into a hash map. We clear it using reflection, <laughs> which is pretty much a hack. Uh, anyway, uh, it's on the GitHub side of Frederick. You can, uh, there's a whole documentation on what you have to do. It's basically getting a jar in there with the web script that allows you to do that. It's not something official, but at least for development purposes, this will help you to have to avoid rebooting a, your Alfasco server. Um, there were some problems with the previous candidate. So the company now decided that we want to have a private investigator doing a background check at the same time we're doing the interview. So I'm not going to bore you now with, um, with, with configuring this process, but I'm going to show you another neat feature of this tool. So you might have seen we've got here a CMS navigator tab. This is actually just, as the name says, it allows you to browse your repository using CMS you know, as you're used to browse your repository, you can do stuff like, uh, uh, where is this? No, this I need later on. So you can do stuff like uh, renaming stuff, one, two, three, uh, deleting stuff. There you go. That's all where, you know, just using CMS behind the scenes. But more importantly, it allows you to do collaboration for um, processes, for Kickstarter processes. So you see that here in my, um, I've got a hiring.kickprog.zip file. Now, uh, what it does is actually here, there's a kickstart thing, and I can select synchronize with repository. So if I would do that, it would grab this process, it would find out which form it's all using, bundle it in a zip file, and upload it to the site or the, the place in the repository you selected. Now, I did that before, uh, before this session, so I already have it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it to Project X, and here it is. So this is the third phase with the background check. Um, what, what is new here? Well, we've got now a parallel step. So this is the parallel step for the private investigation and the waiting. We also, in the interview, we also now see the results. So in the private investigation, this, this investigator actually 
uploads, he, don't, he doesn't have access to the package items. We don't want him to you know, see all the documents that are there. But we do want him to upload documents to the evidence, right? So that is using the, uh, the content selection thing here. And we also want then, when the interview happens, we also want him to, uh, the, the person who we interviewed, to see this evidence. So suppose that there are any you know, things you need to know beforehand, before the interview, you will be able to see this, how you link those document containers um, together. Um, there's also a cool feature, I'm not going to show you, I don't know how much time I have, <coughs> that if you uh, are here in Project X, so suppose that somebody else is doing this process together with you and you have it here, if you do the right click synchronize with the repository, right, it will know when somebody else did a change. So suppose that I'm doing something and Mike is doing something else at the same time, he's first, he uploads stuff to that repository, right, I'm trying to upload my change and it will say, hey, can't do that. Mike has done some changes before you. What do you want to do? You want to review this? You know, like typical source version control, uh, but now specific for, for these Kickstarter process. Now, we don't have like a visual merge yet. That would be very cool to have one day. But at least it gets you something, right? You don't overwrite other people's thing. Uh, let's export this to the system. Uh, just to make sure, because I did notice an error uh, just now. I'm going to make this hiring two so you can see the difference. And I'm going to export it to the live system. Finish, here you go. <coughs> Uploading, reloading. If I now go to, you all know this, right? If I now select hiring two, which is the hiring of Steve. He's a, I'm calling an engineer again. His name is Steve Wozniak. Steve at apple.com. Let's upload some stuff from him. Resumes, document library, here you go. <coughs> Again, the same people. This is just the same stuff as before. One person, start the workflow. Here we go, hiring a Steve. Quickly do the screening. That's all looking very nice. Um, yeah, for the people who don't know him, just a picture. Steve Wozniak. Uh, long thing. Anyway, he did a lot of stuff. I just copy pasted it from Wikipedia site. So it's not very uh, interesting. Approve it. <coughs> We're now having a scheduled interview. Uh, which time is it? 15, 17. There you go. We now have the private investigation going on. So I'm going to log out for one time now. Sherlock, Sherlock. Somebody seems a joke. <laughs> So the hiring of Steve is now in his uh, dashboard. He, he gathers some evidence. He goes to the resumes. Again, he uploaded this stuff already. Here you go. He does his work. Task is done. Log out again. Log in as Brian. <clears throat> Brian will now have the task of doing the interview. But now, since those document containers, you see these are the package items visible by everybody. And these are the specific evidence document container only visible by our guy Sherlock and now by the guy doing the interview. Now, there are some pictures here, which we might, five pictures here, which we might need to see before the interview. I don't know uh -huh. if you can see this. There's a lot of stuff about Steve Wozniak you can find online. This is probably the worst one. <laughs> anyway, task done, paperwork. And the point is not the process. Again, the point is definitely not the process. The point is, is showing you how easy it is with this tooling to create workflows forms in Alfresco compared to how it was uh, before and how much time you actually gain by doing so. Where can you get this? Well, all the codes has been released before the summit of Barcelona. Um, this code is on GitHub activity, the github.com slash activity slash activity designer. If you want to install it yourself in Eclipse, just go to the Eclipse update site, fill in this uh, uh, activity tutorial with designer beta things. It should be compatible with 4.0 and more. I tested it only with community 4.2. Uh, it's currently only best used in Juno. There is a synchronization issue, so if you use the synchronization thing uh, to, to work together, collaborate, there is a, a problem in Helios and Kepler, uh, but we're working on fixing that. It's just basically something they changed in Eclipse uh, in, the, in the Helios release. Um, so what are we going to do with, uh, with this? Well, we're going to continue to add stuff on top of that. New constructs, no support for new form things. 
Um, we're also going to working on making this available for non-technical users. So this was quite a technical solution, of course. Um, and some users might find this okay, but we're going to work on a version in the browser. Um, and we have some wireframes for that. Now this might not be the final version, this might not be at all how it looks like, but the idea is pretty much the same. You've got a canvas somewhere, and you've got steps, constructs, you can drag and drop on those, on those canvases. Canvas. It's pretty much the same, but in a more you know, a handhold way for poor little end users. Um, yeah, just basically the same, configuring your steps, etc. So, some conclusions. You can use Kickstarter today, it's already available. You can install it, try it out, give us feedback, that would be great. It really simplifies, I think, uh, and speeds up the whole process creation, form creation in our fresco. Um, yeah, and you can make me very happy by spreading the love and tweeting about how much you love this and make all my other colleagues jealous. I thank you for listening, and uh, I've still got 10 minutes for questions. Brilliant. Thanks. So when are you going to extend it to work with AWD? Sorry? AWD. Alfresco work desk for those of us that use it yeah, for the workflows. So it should be uh, it should be compatible with it. So I mean, uh, work desk can I mean, say if I'm wrong, work desk uses activity in Alfresco as it is. So if it works on Alfresco, it also works in work desk, right? There might be some things we need to add on, on top of that, but that's stuff that we are discussing or need to discuss. Well, I was thinking specifically about the forms because yeah. I know that yeah, it yeah, creates absolutely. JSP no, no, no. forms no, instead no, absolutely. of. Absolutely, that's true. So the form rendering actually is already pluggable because we've got two mechanisms. One is activity specific and the other one is Alfresco now. The form is completely pluggable and uh, maybe I can show you that. That's probably interesting. The intermediate format of those forms is actually just, yeah, you can see it is actually just JSON. So we've okay. got a JSON thing, that JSON parser thing, that actually takes this JSON and outputs it to Alfresco XML. But to do it in WorkDesk, we just need to take this JSON and output it to a format that is you know, specific to WorkDesk. So we already catered for that. We just need to write it now. That's it. Yeah. But that's definitely something that the people of WorkDesk have, have asked me about. Are there tools for um, absorbing previous workflows like um, earlier activity or JBoss workflows into the, the current model? Not in this thing, but that's something we would like to have. So one of the things which I really would like to implement is um, that you could go from this simple modeling environment to the more complex one I showed you in the demo, right? The Eclipse, uh, the activity designer. Uh, and the problem is you can go there one way now, but you can't go back anymore the previous way. So what I'd like to do is going back the previous way of having the complex process model and going back to the simple one, maybe losing some few bits, right? If, if it's really you know, something that doesn't support it. But that's something, yeah, that's definitely, definitely something we, we want to do and will do uh, because it just makes a lot of sense to do. Uh, for JBoss, I'm afraid so. It's not, uh, it's not, <laughs> it's not a, yeah, a cup of tea anymore, so. We have those workflows already, you know. We already have earlier workflows, and we'd like to, like, you know, upgrade yeah. them to a more yeah. contemporary. You mean JP, JPDL workflows? J, JBPN2. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, I'm a, there is an effort um, uh, from Eric Chabel. I don't know if you've seen that already. He's a, he's a guy from the, from the Netherlands who wrote a JPDL3 to BPN20 migration tool. I don't know how good it is or how, what it covers. Supposedly, the way I see on the website and the feedback, it's pretty good. Uh, so you could try to run those. It's, it's um, Eric Chabel, uh, B A L L at the end. He's a guy. It's on GitHub. It's an open source project. Uh, he used to. Well, he still works for JBoss, and he, he wrote that that tooling. So that's probably the only uh, uh, thing you, you might try. Yeah. Uh, this was very useful. Uh, I was wondering uh, if you have a custom components, let's say around the mm -hmm. listeners, those mm -hmm. sort of things that we mm -hmm. want to plug in, or yes. the f yes. pick list maybe mm -hmm. I want to populate it from a yes. database. That's one of the features we will implement very soon is uh, we've got the mechanism already in Activity Designer, so it's not very hard for us to port. So the way it works in the Activity Designer is you put a class, well, a jar on the class part of, of the Eclipse, basically. Um, and it's annotated with you know, information so we can pick it up at runtime. And basically you have to say like, this is my implementation class, this is the icon I want to use, and this is the behavior I want to do it whenever you export it because you also need to be able to serialize it, right? Um, so we will use a similar mechanism. So if you, if you and your company have a specific step in the form or here, you should just be able to code that, put it on the class path, and it will pop up here in the palette. 
we have the me mechanism already. We just need to, you know, my, my first goal was to get it running for the demo. <laughs> and the next goal is to, yeah, make it real. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. That's true, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Wow. Glad you like it. So please try to get feedback and spread the love on Twitter uh, so my colleagues back in Belgium can see how much they love it. <laughs> Thank you.